I'm Cyrus. And right now, I'm a 7.6. <laughs> That's my life optimization score. Here's how I know. This is my spider chart. It shows the most important areas of my life. A spider chart can be a great way to visualize happiness across various dimensions. And the game is to push out as far as you can on each axis. Of course, we all have our own axes and our own scales for what we consider a 10. As the child of two Indian parents, from the age of 0 to 22, this was my spider chart. <laughs> One axis. And my goal, my job, <laughs> was to optimize the hell out of that. <laughs> Before I even started college, I had charted out every course I was going to take through graduation, optimizing every credit hour. While my freshman year roommate sitting next to me is, you know, looking through the course catalog and says, I think I'm going to take 19th century French literature. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I actually wish that I had taken more classes just because they were interesting. And my optimizing didn't stop there. When I first met my wife, I invited her to book a date on my online scheduler. <laughs> that didn't go very well. Actually, I guess it did. <laughs> With that history, it's probably no surprise that I have spent the last 20 years of my life helping people and businesses be more efficient. When I had the chance to work on time and task management products at Google, I saw at close range the root problem facing productivity and happiness for people at work and at home. It is very challenging to maximize our life optimization score with the barrage of inputs that are coming at us. We get dozens, often hundreds, of emails a day, social media messages, text messages, news alerts, phone calls. In fact, here's an actual day of mine, 461 interruptions, not including email, in one day. And I'm sure many of you can relate. This barrage of inputs can lead to feeling overwhelmed, increased stress, lack of focus, procrastination. Or the most common reaction to all of this is just feeling like we're not enough. And to address this malaise, what do we do? We create lists, personal to-do lists and work to-do lists. And, or if you're like me, you create spreadsheets. <laughs> Since 2007, when Google Sheets came out, I have made and maintained 333 spreadsheets for areas that I wanted to optimize in my life. That's not a made-up number. Um, <laughs> Uh, picking our house, picking our car, uh, financial accounts, the, an inventory of the models of the light bulbs in my house. I, in fact, as I was preparing, <laughs> this drives my wife crazy. In fact, as I was preparing for this talk, I actually realized that I had made a spreadsheet to count the number of spreadsheets that I'd made. <laughs> now, this may seem like just incredible optimization. But in reality, every list we create is just another input. It only exacerbates the problem. And when faced with this onslaught of inputs and all the lists that we create to manage it, we usually do one of two things. We become reactive, and we just, OK, and there's a text message, an email, next, next, next. Or we check out and think, I'm done, and we queue up our four favorite girls in Miami. OK, that's mostly me. <laughs> there is a better way. Imagine if it was possible to aggregate all of these inputs, factor in what's most important in your life, and intelligently determine the one optimal thing you should be doing right now. 
Imagine if your laptop and phone could help you be more productive that way, at work and at home. What if you had your own personal life optimizer, always helping you stay focused on that most important task? The ideal life optimizer would not give you a list of things to do, because that's just another input. And because the next optimal thing is always changing, it would just give you one item, the one thing to do right now. It's actually very liberating to only have to focus on one thing. And the ideal life optimizer would know who's most important in your life. It would know your goals, your constraints, what time of day you're at your best, even your food needs based on the day's activity. It could use all of that information to help maximize satisfaction in every aspect of your life, a true life optimization machine. Some technology already exists to help you with this. For instance, the free Google Calendar app lets you set goals, and it even allocates time for you to do them. And it schedules around your commitments, and it learns your preferences and behaviors over time. It's a great tool to help you move toward your planned objectives. But it won't help you with your input-laden days. There is a technology that I believe someday soon will be able to help you make these choices. For instance, it might recommend you spend these 10 minutes before your next meeting to look at this email that just came in from your boss, or um, recommend that it help you book dinner for next week because it's going to be your anniversary, or that you call your mother back. She's called twice recently. That one is mostly for me. It could surprise and delight you. It could recommend you go take your kids for ice cream or you check out the art festival that's opening close by. It could allocate time for you to do nothing. You'd always be able to adjust how it works. Now, I know that there may be some resistance to this grand vision. Some of you may be thinking, uh, OK, uh, that's unnerving. Uh, I don't think I want a system to know all this about me. Or you might be thinking, no, I always like having to decide what to do next. Or you may be thinking, I'm going to completely ignore this. And I'm going to toss this into the pile of other aspirational technologies that I've tried and ignored in the past. I hear you. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I've tried them. I believe this technology will meet you where you are. It'll balance the value provided with your desired level of control. Now, until it arrives, here's what you can do to emulate this machine yourself. First, create your spider chart. Determine the most important areas of your life and determine your target outcome in each area. What's your 10? Then score each area, and the average of those scores is your rough life optimization score. Then, and yes, math geeks, you can weight the axes if you want. I did. <laughs> so some math people say oh, not all things are the same. <laughs> Spend, figure out how much time you should be spending in each area. And when it comes time to focus on that one area, just know the one thing you're going to do to make progress in that area. Just the next thing. And to increase your likelihood of success, turn off your notifications, put your phone on Do Not Disturb. All of that will be there when you get back. Once you have optimized every next moment, you will have optimized your life. Because life is just a string of moments. And if done well, over time, you will feel less overwhelmed, more in control, and your spider chart may one day look like this. And if not, you can do what I do. You can ride off into the sunset with an incredible database of spreadsheets <laughs> and the theme song to the Golden Girls ringing in your head. Thank you for being a friend, Detroit. Thank you.